So our topic of today is archives of the World Wide Web and how we can access the internet of the past. Most content in the internet is short-lived as web pages are updated, replaced or removed quite frequently. Uh, actually, there have been several surveys to uh, know in order to know how long the average web page lifespan is. And it turns out the average lifespan of a web page is less than a year. The exact amount of time depends on the definition of a web page, like do you count a URL, unified resource locator, associated with, with a given content as a website? Do you count content associated with a given domain? Or do you also count something as like if 50% 50, 50 for example of the web page is changed as web page lifetime is lost? So depending on these definitions, the lifespan of a web page differs, but where all the surveys agree is that it's very short. Therefore, web content is continuously disappearing. And this makes it difficult to use the internet as the huge database that it actually is. The aim of web archives is actually to solve this problem. It's clear that due to the short-lived nature of web pages, they are very important. So their main function is that they can help to find untraceable content. So either because the website has completely disappeared because it's under a different URL or because content has disappeared due to updating. So these are the main advantages first, find missing content. Then what you can also use them for is to cite web content. If you want to refer to the content of a web page, if you just refer to the URL until people read your paper or wherever you cite this, the web page may have disappeared or changed. So in this case, it's very useful to use a web archive and also include this in the citations where this website can be found. Then also an important function is if you need certified records. So if you want to prove that at a given time, a specific content was on a specific web page, for example, for legal proceedings, then also web archives can help to uh, give you a certified proof of, of web page content. The challenge for internet archives is also very obvious. It's the very large number of web pages. You can see here the development starting from the beginning of the internet up to now. Here you have the launch of the big websites like Yahoo, Google, Facebook. And with all of that, nowadays we are at 1.8 billion web pages. So this is really a lot. And it's very clear that there is no single archive which can store all of that. In addition, this is not static, but all of these pages are continuously updated. You can also not just like take a snapshot, for example, every day, but you have to find some useful intervals in order to archive the web pages with all the updates. So how does it work technically to create a web archive, we start out with the living web, with the current web pages. First step we have to do is to create a list of URLs for the archive. We can either do that by just writing a list or by looking through all the URLs in a given domain or by doing topical searches. Then the next thing is we have to access and get the content. So we have to crawl these web pages. This is usually done with specialized crawlers for web archive. And then we have to fetch the content of these pages. Then when we have fetched them, next step is quality assurance. So we have to make sure that what we have actually fetched 
is really the content we want. So this is obviously for larger archives needs to be done automatically. For smaller archiving can also be done manually. Then uh, in order to make the archive accessible, we need to create an index and manage the access. This means for the web page, we have web pages we have fetched. We need to put them in some kind of data structure where they are organized and where they can be found by the user. And we have to define which user can access which of these archive contents. And this is then our web archive. Okay, so what are the technical challenges of this process? First, the web crawling methods. The problems are here that you want to avoid add, detect spam and so on, because otherwise you may just store a lot of ads in your web archive. Then uh, personalization is a problem since uh, many pages have different versions for different users. And obviously a crawler can always just access one version. So this can be problematic. Then also something uh, to think about is the web links. Almost each page contains some web links. And if you want to keep the page usable in the archive, you need to store the web links with the page and you need to access the linked content and store the linked content. When you do this, you have to make sure that in the stored web page, the links refer to the links in the archive and not to the links on the current version of the web page in order for the thing to be functional. And then another problem are the updates. Most web pages are updated irregularly. So you have to decide on some kind of interval on how often you want to store the web page. So, so far for the challenges, and this leads us directly to the limitations of web, web archives. So what can we expect? The first limitation is obviously the limited crawling of linked pages, because if you fetch the content of the linked pages, then these linked pages again have links on them, where you could again fetch the content and so on and so forth, so you would never finish. So this doesn't work. So you have to come up with some policy, like for example, only fetch links within a given domain space or only fetch the first layer of links and so on, or not fetch links at all, obviously also works. If you look at the structure of the internet, we have the surface web, which is accessible to everyone. Then we have the deep web where you have private pages like non-public databases, company web pages, and so on. And we have the dark web. And obviously the archiving mainly takes place on the surface web, at least the public archiving here. You have only archiving if you have a specific uh, mandate of a company to do the archiving here. Despite the fact that you only archive the surface web, which is publicly available, you still can have a problem with copyright or license restrictions, which means you can crawl and fetch the pages, but you cannot make them accessible to everyone. And this uh, clearly is a problem for web, web archives. And so many web archives have specific agreements and permissions to store content and they have limited possibilities to provide content to users. Uh, I will make some examples in a minute. Okay, so how many web archiving services do we have currently? You can see here the development, so it accumulated web archiving initiatives. This is from a survey of 2017. So it doesn't quite go up until 2021, but in 2030, we had about 60 web archiving services and they were covering all these countries here in the map. This doesn't mean that they were covering all the web pages of all these countries. This is just countries with some web archiving services. And some of these services are also 
uh, fetch pages all over the world. So also web content from other countries may be archived and stored. And I also assume that since 2014, there probably have been some more uh, services added. For the practical part, let's look at some archiving resources. The best known internet archive site is simply called the Internet Archive. It's a nonprofit organization headquartered in San Francisco. Its main function is to be a digital library of internet sites. But in addition, it also provides ebooks, audio recordings, videos, and more. You only have to register as a user, but it's free of charge. In order to use the library of internet sites, you don't even need to register. You can just go ahead. The main service here, which they use to access all the archived web pages is called the Wayback Machine. Here, the web page versions are collected over time. So let's have a look at this. So this is the internet archive. You can either enter an URL if you know it, or you can just enter keywords. So let's start with something obvious. So now what you get as a result for this given URL is a timeline here. Here you can see all the years where this specific URL was archived. Then what you can do is just select one of the year, let's take 2005. And then you get the calendar with blue circles and each of the blue circles has at least one snapshot of the page. The larger ones have several snapshots, like for example here. Then you can select one of the snapshots and this will open the web page of that year at that time. So that's how the German page looked like in 2005. Then you also have the English page linked to it. And you can see here that how this is done in the Internet Archive. The English page, you're, you're not linked to the current English page of the University of Bern, but to the English page in the archive of that year of that day. So everything in this domain has been archived with the main page. Now let's look at an alternative web archive. This is simply called archive today. What is nice here is right on the starting page, you have either the possibility to archive some content or you can search for archived content. So if you come across a web page, which you think it's really important and you want to preserve it, you can simply use this service and archive it. You can also internet app, use Internet Archive, which I just showed before, but it's a few more steps in order to do the archiving yourself. Also here, you can search for URLs or you can also search for full text, so for keywords. Let's do the same thing here. Uh, the archiving takes some time, so I want to a live demo of that. And we can again search for the same snapshots and you can see here, this is organized in a slightly different way. You just have here a list, chronological list of everything within this domain, all the pages that have been archived over time. And you can look for a specific page you want to see. So, so far for archive.today. Then there are also several national archives, for example, Switzerland, uh, Germany, and the UK have their web archiving services. But unfortunately, these are not so nice to use. Uh, I can also show you that. So in principle, you can use it the same way. You can just search for a URL or keyword. Then you search the archive for snapshots of this. 
then you can see the snapshot it has. But when you want to open snapshots, you cannot really open it, but you can only access it in the reading rooms, which are listed here. This is obviously not very nice. This is the same thing for German web archive, the UK web archive, for example, there is also a lot of content which you can access publicly. The reason for that is that um, they don't want to deal with all the copyright and intellectual property issues. And it's no problem if the web pages are not just openly presented to the users, but can only be accessed in the reading room, then it's no problem for them. But obviously, if you look for a public page, for another version of a public page, this is not very useful. And therefore, uh, in this case, it's useful to first check the Internet Archive or other similar sites, whether the web page is already available. It may be quite complicated to look through a lot of Internet archives in order to find one where your web page is available. Uh, for this purpose, the Memento project has been created. The aim is to search various Internet archives in order to find one with a snapshot of a web page at the given time. This is part of the Memento project led by the Los Alamos National Laboratory and Old Dominion University. So it searches for the URL in various web archives. Unfortunately, not in all of them. This is due to the fact that the web pages need to support a specific protocol, which is called time travel for the web. But we can also try this out. So also here, just enter URL, then you can enter a year, time, uh, date, and then just try to find this web page. This may take some time unfortunately a bit slow. And then you get the list of archives where this specific web page has been stored. So we again have the internet archive. This is the closest to the date and time we selected. But we have an also different archive here, archive. It. Then we have Library of Congress archive, the Icelandic web archive, and for any of these archives, you can access the page and then um, you will get access directly to this specific page in this archive. Also, what you may see on the archive web pages that, for example, not all the pictures and everything is shown correctly. This is often due to changes in web standards. And so therefore not everything may be compatible. This is for the time travel memento project. And with this, I hope I could show you some useful resources for web archiving. And I would like to summarize so we have seen that web content is very short-lived and web archives can help finding missing content and provide certified web records. Then web archives provide access to different versions of a web page over time. And archiving is either done automatically or also upon user's request. Challenges are to capture entire websites with full functionality, provide content to users without intellectual property or license restrictions, and also obviously the huge uh, number of websites. Then you have seen some useful resources, starting with the internet archives, and now you can try out for yourself uh, any of them. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions.